All right, guys, I got this guard padlock from Ted Park, a locksmith, and he sent me a little note saying that he found these things, lately at least, to be highly variable in resistance to picking. So I wanted to know why, because I looked at one of these not too long ago, and it had spools in it, which, again, I found to be kind of an upgrade from previous versions of this padlock. But I think there's been a lot more improvements. I think guard is watching what we do. So let me go some of the, through some of the techniques that I've used on guard padlocks in the past, starting with probably the most successful one. And that would involve my favorite tool. Well, actually, my favorite tool is a larger hammer, but this is the one I use. Uh, the wrapping technique typically works, worked, past tense, really good on guard locks. And the way you do it, you take your finger and you pull and you uh, on the shackle while at the same time pushing down on the body. Very light tension, and then you wrap it. And what is happening is every time you strike that, in the old locks, inside of here are two locking paws with a pretty weak spring between them. The locking paws would bounce back and then you would get an open. An alternative to that is to, again, take the same hammer and hit it with a glancing blow on the top. And a lot of times that was enough to cause them to bounce back, almost like uh, trying to bump a lock. It would bounce those locking paws back and then the shackle would pop open. This was really a successful technique doesn't work on this new one. So I, I started wondering why. By the way, here's what the key looks like. And I got to tell you, when I saw this key, I thought, oh, how disappointing is that? But it's not disappointing at all. Let's take a look at that locking paw. See if I can get it in there, that is the right key. When you rotate it, it's this pretty strong spring tension on the core. It rotates almost 90 degrees and then it pops open. We've got locking paws on both sides. And that's really what we're interested in here. Let's take a look at that locking paw. Let me grab this pick. The locking paws now have a, what I would classify to be a super spring inside. Now there's two locking paws that, that are opposing and there's a spring in between them that keeps them pushed out into these two cutouts. You can no longer hit this lock hard enough to overcome the spring load on either of those two locking paws. So that technique doesn't work uh, because they put a new spring in here. Again, when you take a look at this, locking paw. You notice that there's an edge on the top of it and on both sides. Well, why do they do that? Well, because one of my favorite techniques was to shim them. So when I grabbed a shim, this is the side that pops out. So I tried to slide him in there and he does slide in, but I can't, for the life of me, get that shim past the sharp edge on that locking paw. It's preventing me from inserting that, uh, that shim. Even if I could get him in there and get that one, you'll notice that the tolerances on this lock now are so tight that even if I got that one in, there wouldn't be enough room on the other side to get a second shim in there, which you'd have to do. So again, they watch what we did, they tighten up the tolerances, and we can no longer get in there quite that way. Another technique I loved on the old guard is I would simply shim the core. Look what they've done here, guys. They've put a lip on that core now. We can no longer insert our shims just will not go in there. So they definitely are watching how we defeat their products. Another way was these were, the old version of this was unshielded. So real easy, and this is really the fastest way. Get your knife, go against the pins, you compress all the pins, angle it to that side, and you go back and forth. And in this lock, you get nothing because they've got a newly constructed shield in there to shield the locking paws. We can't push them with our knife. All right, we've tried all of the very, very quick ways. Now we're forced, based on this pinning, to rake it. And you might think, well, that's going to go really fast. Not so much. I found there are spools in here. And when you combine the spools with a really strong spring on this core, on the rotation, what will happen? You overcome your spring tension and just apply a very slight tension. And then when you slide your your uh, rake in there and begin raking, you do get a false set almost immediately as you hit that spool. But look at this. You're not getting that pick out of there until you release your tension and uh, that spool can then move back up at the cylinder and get out of the way. Even if you try it from the front, you get kind of the same thing. It'll slide past it, but when you try to withdraw it, you get stuck. So they forced our hand now, guys. We have two single pin pick. And that's what I thought. So I grab this guy. I know it's full of spools. Go down through there. 
find a pin that gives me my false set, and right there is, and then I start getting nothing but spools. I've got a nice false set, and then it's that first pin. So I set that spool, I go to the second pin, set that spool, and I come back to the first one, and he's back down, set him, come on, get up there. And then the second one is down, and basically the first three pins appear to be in perfect alignment in that core. They all bind at the same time, and they all pretty much fall down at the same time. I can't tell about pin four and five. I, I would doubt that they also are in perfect alignment, but it's possible. I guess what I'm trying to say here is we, we kind of get locked into different techniques. I like to SPP everything. That's a skill I really want to develop, that touch and feel. I put a lot of hours into it, and I'm sure you have too. But sometimes locks don't need a lot of skill to get into. So I had to fall back on an older technique, which requires no skill whatsoever. Apply, the, the only skill you need is right there in the tip of that finger. You overcome your spring tension, and that is about it. Don't put a lot of pressure on it. I used to have a word for this technique, but it's a family channel. Can't say it anymore. But it's a very aggressive, non-skilled attack with your pick. Light tension, and then just do this. Now notice when I'm flopping him, we got an open very quickly, and that is the only quick open I can get on this lock. Notice when I do this technique, I slide him in, and I don't align him with any particular pin. Apply a little bit of tension, when I shove the pick to the left, I'm allowing the shaft of that pick to go all the way to the top. So if there are pins in there that are perfectly aligned with each other, in other words, they all bind or fall at about the same time, then the shaft should raise them all simultaneously and overcome that level of perfection or that level of improvement that happens to be in this lock. I don't know if it's just this guard or if all guard locks in this family, the, the 834-40, have gotten all of these improvements, but they've upped their game, guys. And so we need to, I guess, downgrade our game and go with a non-skilled random attack. That's the only way I found to get in sync quickly. Anyway, guys, keep your minds open. If what you're doing doesn't work, try something different. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal.